look like this. So we do so without even thinking about it. We just, you know, get caught up in the, 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 the what is it called, the race consciousness. All these other people are thinking and, and acting in a, certain, in, in a certain particular way. And so rather than affect something different, rather than project something different, we just agree with it without meaning to. And then when we agree with it without meaning to, then it becomes this thing where we're operating on something because we are unconscious about it. The Course says that an untrained mind can accomplish nothing or can accomplish little. However, it says it. It says that an untrained mind does that stuff. And so if we are really about the, like, training our mind to see differently, then what we'll do is, is that we'll say, like, you know, um, my minister's wife, she's always saying, cancel, 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 you know, it's so funny, because every time she says something that, um, that doesn't jive with what she's, what she's thinking, or with her thought system, it's like, cancel, 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 and so, um, I'm also, like, of that, that same type of vein, it's like, ah, you know, what cancel that thought because that is not going into my consciousness so um but 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 here's the other thing here's the other thing it's also seeing you know the the whole entire picture and being able to as you see it respond to it and um and put it in its proper perspective so if we know if i know that i am not my body if I know that um, that only bodies can be sick and that I'm whole, mm, uh, science of mind group, yes, 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 my science of mind group. You know, I got a science of mind book sitting right behind me. Love science of mind. Um, and so, um, if I recognize the truth about myself, if I recognize the blessings um, that that are here. If I recognize that I am not my, that, that, that who I am is not necessarily, is not my body, then, um, then that should change how I see things. It should change how I think about things. It should change everything. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm totally in that space. I'm totally in a good place. Um, I'm totally there. So you guys, um, I want to, um, I just did one of my numbers that I love to do. I, I flipped through the book and I came across something. And don't ask me why I flipped through the book. Yes, yeah, juicy girl. It is juicy. Um, <laughs> all of life is juicy. Um, but I just looked down at my book. Mm, and, and, um, and I, for some reason, I want to read this to you. It is out of um, chapter 28, The Undoing of Fear. I looked down. I saw it looking at me. And, um, and, and so I'm going to read. I'm going to read. Your Savior waits for healing, and the world waits with him. Nor are you apart from it, for healing will be one or not at all. It's oneness being where the healing is. What could correct but separate what could correct for separation but its opposites? There is no middle ground in any aspect of salvation. You accept it wholly or accept it not. Mm. What is unseparated must be joined, and what is joined cannot be separated. So most people have the perception that they're separate. Most people have the perception that there is a separation. Most people look out there and they see these people. I see people. I see people. And so they think that necessarily that because they see them out there, that they are separate from them. I remember one of my professors talking about um, us coming into the awareness that we exist in a kind of a quantum soup, if you will. A quantum soup, much like vegetable soup. And we're all floating in this big pot of soup, but we can't see the, um, the liquid substance 
the liquid substance in which we are swimming in. So if you imagined um, this world sort of like a big bowl of soup and there being all these things in there, the soup is one but because it has things in there like vegetables and broth and all of these things, the meat is the, you know, uh, maybe as a, as a earth or a planet, I don't know. But we have the perception that because we see it in pieces, because we see the pieces, that the pieces are separate. But really it's all one whole. We exist in this quantum soup known as God that we call God. And because we see other pieces in there, like P-E-I-P-I-E-C-E-S, <laughs> we see all these other pieces in there. We have the, the perception that it's separate and apart, or these things have divisions and space within them. But really, it's all part of this one collective whole that is G-O-D. So you take part in this substance, this source, this thing that is G-O-D. All of us are in there. All of us are part of it. We have the perception that we're not. But in truth, that's exactly what we are. So there is no, when it says there is no middle, middle ground in any aspect of salvation, you accept it wholly or accept it not, what is unseparated, must be joined, a bowl of soup. It may look like it's got pieces, parts in there, but it's unseparated. It is one whole. It is it is joined because it is all part of the same substance. We are all part of the same substance that we know to be God. Um, and that's that to me is just just awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, so let me go over here. Um, I'm always starting off in the middle of stuff. I just like look down at the page and it's like whatever jumps up at me, I'm reading. And sometimes it doesn't seem like it would make sense. But um, but it just because it comes to me like that, I try to just be obedient and read it. Um, so so let me start off here with this as purpose with this as purpose is the body healed. It is not used to witness to the dream of separation and disease, nor is it idly blamed for what it did not do. It serves to help the healing of God's son. And for this purpose, it cannot be sick. It will not join a purpose, not your own, and you have chosen that it not be sick. All miracles are based upon this choice and given you the instant it is made. No form of sickness, no forms of sickness are immune because the choice cannot be made in terms of form. I'm on page 604, um, Undoing of Fear. The section is the Arc of Safety, um, which is seven, section seven. I'm in paragraph number four. Um, so, so where, where did I stop reading? It serves to help the healing of God's son for this purpose. For this purpose, it cannot be sick. It will not join a purpose, not your own. And you have chosen that it not be sick. All miracles are based upon this choice and giving you the instant it is made. No forms of sickness are immune. Because the choice cannot be made in terms of form. The choice of sickness seems to be of form, yet it is one, as it is the mm, yet it is one, as is its opposite. And you are sick or well accordingly. No forms of sickness are immune because the choice cannot be made in terms of form. The choice of sickness seems to be a form, yet it is one, as is its opposite. And you are sick or well accordingly, but never you alone. This world is but a dream that you can be alone and think without affecting those apart from you. To be alone must mean you are apart, and if you are, you cannot but be sick. 
This seems to prove that you must be a part. Yet all it means is, is that you tried to keep a promise to be true to faithlessness. Yet faithlessness is sickness. So, mm, that's interesting. I, You know what? That just jumped out at me. And I'm going to have to like stay with that that particular chapter for um for a minute because I find it so fascinating. Um and it's like, okay, so Holy Spirit, what have you to say to me here? Mm, yet faithlessness is sickness. It is like the house set upon straw. It seems to be quite solid and substantial in itself. Yet its stability cannot be judged apart from its foundation. If it rests on straw, there is no need to bar the door and lock the windows to make fast the bolts. The wind will topple it and the rain will come and carry it into oblivion. Remember that example? I don't know if you were here yesterday, but that was the exact example I gave yesterday about that um about um what did i say ah! um oh shucks i was talking about um how we how we grasp at straws you know as we're drowning we're grasping at things that have absolutely no ability to bound us up and to keep us up or to support us with the weight that we're trying to give it. And so I was talking about this very thing. And I, you know what? And, and look, oh, here it is, deprivation. That's what I was talking about, that deprivation. That we're when we're in turmoil, we go and we grab at things. And it has absolutely no ability to support us. And it's talking about this very thing. It's like the foundation. If the foundation is is shaky, then everything as a result will also be shaky. Man, I love this. What is the sense in seeking to be safe in what was made for danger and for fear? Mm. What is the sense in seeking to be safe in what was made for danger and for fear? Why burden it with further locks and chains and heavy anchors when its weakness lies not in itself, but in the frailty of the little gap of nothingness whereon it stands? What can be safe that rests upon a shadow? Would you build your home upon what will collapse beneath a feather's weight? Ah, oh, don't you just love this? Your home is built upon your brother's health. Your home is built upon your brother's health, upon his happiness, his sinlessness, and everything his father promised him. No secret promise you have made instead has shaken the foundation of his home. The winds will blow upon it and the rain will beat against it, but with no effect. The world will wash away, and yet this house will stand forever, for its strength lies not within itself alone. It is an ark of safety resting on God's promise that his son is safe forever in him. Isn't that beautiful? What gap can interpose itself between the safety of this shelter and its source? From here, the body can be seen as what it is and neither less nor more in worth than the extent to which it can be used to liberate God's son upon its home. And with this holy purpose, it is made a home of holiness a little while because it shares your father's will with you. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what? Life, spirit, God, all of this, you guys are so beautiful. It's as if I look down at a page and it answers a prayer. It always seems to happen that way. And it's just so wonderful and juicy um, that it does. I'm so elated that it does. Isn't that amazing? So, um... Wow. So, so, so let me, let me, um, yeah, let me, let me just marinate on that for a second. Let me just, oh my gosh. So, mm, so you know what? 
this is the thing. As long as we're confused about what our life means, as long as we're confused about life, will always perceive some type of sickness in the world. It's until we recognize that our foundation, that the very art, the very thing that who we are lies in is God. You know, all of this other stuff is just, you know, just stuff. Here's, here's, here's the, uh, the fascinating thing. So let me tell you guys about this. Um, as I lay, as I sit there in the hospital with my father and he goes through this stuff with his brain, um, the stroke and the hemorrhage that his brain has had, you guys, will, I, I, I'm sure I shared this with you before, that this brain, this wonderful brain that we have and its brain stem is what sends out impulses throughout our bodies, telling our fingers to move, our eyes to blink. Oh, we, it controls our breathing, our ability to wake up, our walking, all of this stuff. It controls, it's the control center of this thing that we call a body. That is the control center. The thing that the thinks for us, the thoughts, the mind which thinks is not located in your head, but rather your body is in mind. It is in mind like you are in God. It is it is in there. It's not it's not contained within you, but rather it oozes it not even oozes out. It surrounds or it sits outside of this thing called a body. It animates you and controls your body. All that stuff. Um that's simply the way it works. So when as my father is laying there and um, they're basically trying to get him to the point where he wakes up or has the ability to move his fingers. You know, we're yelling in his ear and we're telling him, you know, move your fingers. Can you wiggle your toes? Can you open your eyes? Can you do all these things that show us that this, this brain is still controlling the body functions? And, you, and that the brain has the ability to understand that the mind is saying to you that, no, it, we want you you to wiggle your fingers and you wiggle your toes, but on the left side versus the right side. And then when you get, you know, and so do you know your left from your right, you know, that kind of thing. And so when he knows his left from his right, or it tells him to look over here and, and you know, the, you know, where your fingers are, where your toes are, it shows that there's not brain damage. So that kind of thing. But then the, the other thing is, is that, you know, they, the way that they look at it is like, just like you would a car there is this system that is our body and the body has all these functions in there so when there is an infection it 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 can block or hamper the way that you interact when there's swelling on the brain, it, it inhibits your ability to send the impulse down through this system or through this body, or that you know your bowels to move, or 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 your you even to take breath and breathe. I mean, some things we think is so instinctive or instinctual in us, um, it even forgets to do those minor things. And so as we look at a body as a closed system, um and everything impacting another thing and when it's out of balance or out of sort there seems to be sickness in the body but when you look at this overall system of of god if you look at the overall system of it you know that when we are when we're doing something we start to think that we're out of sorts or, or in, out of alignment with the truth about our being. So say, for instance, we've got a person who is saying one thing, you know, um, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Example, come to me. Um, so, so we say that we are, um, we say that we are lovers. We say that we believe the course in miracles. We say that love is our truth, that love is the bottom line. But if our actions are not in accord with that, there is this misalignment that takes place and it doesn't, the, the entire system, System doesn't operate as it should because something is out of alignment. 
And so if something is out of alignment and, and there is a breakdown in, in the functionality because there is something out of alignment, then what you have uh, what you have is a system that is uh, seems to be attacking itself. It seems to be um, going through that very idea of that notion of attack because something is now out of sorts. They say that our head and our hearts must be in alignment and be in agreement. But most of the time, we'll do things that are not in alignment totally with where we're going. So if Say, for instance, I am in a place where I'm just um, where I'm, I'm totally focused on and, and, and I'm trying to give you guys an example. Um, if I'm in a place where I'm totally focused on love, I have no room. I have no room to get caught up in criticism. I have no room to get caught up in these 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 thoughts of separation and division because love says to me that I need to see it all as one. I need to see us coming together as opposed to separation. So so we think here's the thing. The course tells us so 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 succinctly that our ego would have us think that what we project we get rid of that what we project out there into the world, we no longer are at the effect of it. But what we project, if you, you know, if you're really understanding all this, what you project, you're trying to attack. If you're projecting something, you're trying to make it real about somebody else. And, and what you do in effect is make it real about you. So that's why they say that um, that a person who um, who tries to attack another person, a rapist, is, is at the effect of what they do because you can't separate yourself from what you do in the world. You can't project something out here and think that in here it won't have resonance or it won't have um, a uh, 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 you know, some kind of, of effect within within who you are, whether it be an effect within mind, whether it be effect within your body, because you know that your biography becomes your biology. So whatever you do in the world affects you um, health wise. That's what Carolyn Miss teaches. And I know to be true. I, I, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And so all of this stuff comes together because it is a system. And it seems like they're separate systems, like the physical and the spiritual. But in the Bible, it says that that which is seen comes from that which is not seen. And so there is this perception or this idea that the physical and the spiritual are separate, but they are in truth one. They are in truth one and we can't escape that. So the more we're trying to escape something and trying to make it seem as though it's not, it has no effect or it has no part, it is so not true. So if I'm hating my body, if I'm, which I don't, I love my body, but if I was hating my body, I mean, why wouldn't my body in, 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 in turn feel like it's under attack and therefore give back to me the same hatred that I project towards it? Why would it do something different than what I'm doing to it? If it is one system and it is in alignment, if I'm really a loving person, if I'm really loving me, then I'll love all the aspects of me. I'll love all of this stuff and not be looking at it as if somehow it is an inconvenience or a curse. So all of it becomes this necessary thing that I need to see and send love and healing energy to all the parts of me, even the parts of me that I think are, you know, were yesterday. And here's the other thing. I always like to, you know, I, I, I like to be in the awareness that, that what I do in this moment, mm, uh, what was that movie? Um, what you do in uh, what you do in this moment? Uh, what is that? I, there was a movie, and um, and it started off and it said something like, "What you do in this moment has effects or ripples in eternity, echoes into eternity," and and so I'm always conscious of this thing that we think of as time. So if I'm doing something in this moment, if I'm thinking something in this moment, 
if I have a correction in my thinking, Holy Spirit, correct my thinking. If I'm having a correction in my thinking, they say healing is retroactive. So it finds a place in me where I was, you know, like back before. I'm not even focused on back before, but back before in the in the before time <laughs> off of South Park. In the before time when I had the the thought, I'm going back and retroactively healing that moment so that I can come forward and full live fully in this moment. Healing is retroactive, right mindedness, salvation, retroactive. Get it right now. And it 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 kind of has that effect like that 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 um you know that atomic bomb looking effect. Like when I get the healing now, it goes out and it affects all these parts of my life that need to be healed as well. So as I'm healing, you know, as I'm going through this, I'm not only like, like, like praying for me and my dad, I'm, I'm praying for every part of the sonship because no part of it is separate. And if I want to say, okay, bless me and bless this and bless that without blessing all of this, I can't have that because what happens is, is if it is one closed system, then I must necessarily bless all of it. And if I want any part of it to be blessed, all of it must to be blessed, therefore. And that's a wonderful thing. So it becomes this retroactive thing. It becomes this holding thing. I'm healing this idea of separateness and separation in that one thought. I love the way that this stuff works, you guys, and it works if you work it. If you're sitting there and you're worrying about why it won't work, the moment you have that thought, you're already trying to negate it. God, heal that unbelief. Please, dear God, heal my unbelief. And as you, as I'm saying that for me, I'm also saying it for you. God, please heal our unbelief. Those places in us where we are tempted to think that, oh, it couldn't be. Because it can. If you knew but how powerful you were, you would know that it was true. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, so, you know, it, it's amazing. I'm always saying to people, I love that this is what it is because it's like a network marketing thing that if I'm blessed, if I'm lifted up, then so too are you. And so too is the world. And so if we could just get this to the point where we are just, you know, causing this this big ripple to go out from us, from our hearts and from our minds, then everybody would be healed by that same effect. Ah, And so, I mean, I, you know, that's my desire all the time to be love, to, to show me how to love, to show me how to love even better. It is beyond loving love that is beyond what can be taught right? The aim of the course is not to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence. If one of your blocks is, is that you're withholding from any part of the sonship your love, if that's one of your blocks, let's see how to remove it. If one of your blocks is, is that you're judging any part of it or not loving yourself, let's see how to remove that block. Let's see how to get those things and uh, heal those places and then get them out of the way. Move ye out of my way because all I want to do is love. So it's so amazing because, you know, I, I, um, I too was one of those people who, uh, you know, I was so critical at, at points in my life. I was, you know, even now I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, wow, I haven't been focused on what I desire to be focused on. Um, I haven't been focused on if I, if, if my desire is to study the course all the time, you know, um, if I'm telling you my truth and saying that, you know what, I not only have not today, uh, let me tell y'all this too, before I, I don't know why I'm digressing because I do, that's what I do. 
So today I'm sitting there in um, in my dad's room at the hospital ICU, and um, here comes this woman that I, I'm familiar with because she's one of the social workers there. She comes walking down the hall, but with her is this tall, dark man, you know, and I looked at him and I'm thinking to myself like, okay, now, first off, you know, he was, he was, he's an attractive man. So I looked at him and then as I looked at him a little further, I was like, I know you. I, I did just like that. I know you. And, and uh, it turns out that it was this guy named Brian. And Brian so happens to be one of the chaplains there at, um, at the Cleveland Clinic. He's a chaplain. And so what they were doing, they were going around and they were doing the ash on your head for Ash Wednesday. And so as I'm standing there and I'm saying, I know you, he's looking at me thinking, I know you too. And, and what are you doing here? And how do I not know that you're here? How am I in a hospital for three weeks now? And I know, you know, I've got friends, some of my friends are, you know, on staff, doctors there on staff. And, and I told him, you know what, I am here with my dad. I have not totally been interested in, in socializing or talking. This is not social hour. I'm not inviting guests in there to see people and, and to see my dad. I'm sitting there beside his bed. I may sometimes be online. I may be doing some of my work, but my, my attention is on my dad. And so even while I'm sitting there and I'm criticizing or, or, or saying to myself that I could be doing more studying or I could be doing this or I could be doing that, I'm also understanding that any attack, if I'm attacking myself, you know, what is that? So, so I may, I may be critical and, and say that, oh, this is what I desire to do, but really I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be. I'm, I'm, I'm being gentle with myself through this process. And the same is true for you. If you've got things about yourself that you don't like, please, please, please understand that those have ripple effects throughout your life and your life experience. Get into a place where where you get to a place of acceptance about those things. Stop criticizing yourself. Stop shooting all over yourself. I mean, just stop it now. Get to the point where you see yourself like God sees you, you as a perfect child, exactly how you are. And understand that whatever the obstacles, whatever the situations that are that you are critical of, those may be the very things that are calling you up to something higher in your life. It's not to push you down or, or to, to make you feel inadequate or anything like that. It could be the very challenge that takes you even higher in your life. I know for me, as I talk to you guys here, even in this room, I know that some of the things that I have judged against myself, those are the very things, the things that I fear or the things that cause me hesitation, the places that are critical. I know that those are my challenges. Those are my growth points. I mean, it's as if um, it's, it's as if this is a little obstacle course and the main thing is, is for me to jump and, and, and hit that mark. And as long as I'm giving into my fear, um, my, my fear would look like this, that powerless place that says, I can't, I can't, I can't, or I won't, or I won't deal with a certain thing. That would be my fear telling me those things. But if I really wanted to challenge myself, then I would actually walk into that thing that I fear and do exactly what I fear. So remember, um, about a month ago, we had a whole conversation about me getting ordained right here in this room. And, um, and I was talking about my fears around that, but I also recognize that, that that is a major like thing for me. And so once I get through, it's, a, it's like a challenge that I must overcome within me. And once I get through that, it's like, I'll get my graduation and then new level, new devil, I guess you could say. So I'll get my next challenge. But for right now, that's where I need to go. I know that that is something that I need to take care of. I don't know what that is for you. That could be that, you know, the, it, it could be, uh, ordination. It could be you publishing your book. It could be you losing 50 pounds. It could be you getting married or getting a divorce. It could be whatever, going vegetarian. I don't 
don't know what your challenge is. I don't know what your issues are. But 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 it's not something out there that's put out there just to, you know, to vex you and 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 to to cause drama in your life, but rather to call you up to a higher level, to call you up to something that is possible for your life and just do it. Um for some reason that made me think of uh uh, the Golden Child. Remember that movie with Eddie Murphy, and um, he had to. He was supposed to go save this Golden Child, and so every time he was trying to do something for this, you know, to save this child, he was he met a new challenge, and um, so he needed to go and get this dagger or this knife, and and so he goes into he goes all the way up to Tibet. He goes into this um, temple, and then he says, "Ah," he says. Uh, they told him he needed to ask for the knife, and so he goes into the temple, and he says, "I want the knife." And then they was like, and "No, he didn't say it like that at first. He was like, "Ah, ah, 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 ah I want the knife." please. And they was like, ask, right? And so then, you know, he had to do the, I want the knife, please. It was hilarious to me. I mean, I laughed until I cried. And, um, and then he had to go down into this chamber, um, this bottomless chamber and go across and he had to go and get the knife. And yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that uh, it was Eddie Murphy. I'm sorry. It was Eddie Murphy that was going through this movie in The Golden Child. And so it becomes this thing where we are meeting all these challenges throughout our lives in order to get us to a certain spot, you know? Um, and so whatever the challenge is for you, I don't know what yours is. I know some of what mine's are, um, but all of us have to, to, to meet our challenge and meet it and grow through it. So as we grow through it, we get to, to, to embrace what it is. Yeah, that movie was so hilarious to me. But embrace whatever it is that we get from that. So, so those challenges are not there to tear you down, but to rather lift you up and to show you better how to love, how to love yourself, and whatever that may mean. So I don't know what your challenges are. I, I you know, I, who knows? Who knows what they are? But you know, you'll know. And, and so anytime there is some place in you that is resisting, where you're feeling fear, where you're frustrated, um, do that. I mean, go ahead and do that. I mean, because it could be the very thing that is calling you up to higher ground. And I love it the way that it works. So, um, yeah, and all of it works together. So I'm going to continue to sit um, as... Uh, I'm going to continue to sit beside the bed and not know quite why I'm there, not even care why I'm there, but just being present in that moment so I can spend that and do what it, I am supposed to do, whatever that is. If it is to be my father's protector, or if it is to be his advocate and his voice, if it is to to get a new experience about myself, if it, if it is to let go, I don't know what it is, but all of this is just part of my growth growth at this point and I'm trusting that it's exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm trusting that you're exactly where you're supposed to be and that you're getting the exact lessons that you're supposed to have to get you to the higher ground where you're supposed to be. And 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 I know we all, we all, I, I tell you, a part of our ego thing is to say, oh, I'm already there, you know, and, and I love it. I love it. I love it. That says um, in that one book, it says, um, uh, it says, um, what does that doggone thing say? Uh, enlightened, it's about enlightenment. And, and it says the, the real issue with our enlightenment is thinking that we're not enlightened. And so the moment we think that we're not enlightened, we really aren't. And the moment that you know you are, then, then, then you are that as well. So if you know that you are love, be love, be love, be love. And that means loving every part of the sonship, including yourself. Expressing that and giving yourself permission to just enjoy the juiciness of it. So yeah, that is so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those hugs. Thank you for embracing my family. I thank you for my, your prayers 
and all your blessings. Um, you guys, I appreciate you. I appreciate being here um, and being able to share with you and all that good stuff. So um, I'm, it's, it's time for me to go. And I know, um, I know it's time for me to go. And so I love you and I thank you and uh, Rosie, blessings to you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So with that, I'm going to get off of here. Thank you. Um, oh, everybody. Ha, 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 ha. All right. So I'm logging off. Um, I'm dropping the mic cause I know it's somebody else's time. So love and blessings to you and I'll see you guys soon. All right. Hmm. Yes.